Hi, I'm Sally Thibault and can you believe it? It's Christmas 2016. How fast has this year gone? Amazing. Well, in this video today, I wanted to share something a little bit different. Um, and it's all about understanding your love languages and how by understanding your love languages, it can help you enjoy Christmas just that little bit more. Now, the concept of the five love languages comes from a book by author Gary Chapman. And in that book, he highlights that there are five different ways people give and receive love. And those five are words of affirmation, acts of service, quality time, physical touch, and gifts. And whatever are your two prominent um, love languages is the way that you give and receive love, how you feel loved and how you express love. Let me explain a little bit like this. So my top two love languages are words of affirmation and acts of service. Now, the words of affirmation, I just love it when my husband says, you look fabulous tonight or, you know, you, yeah, you've done such a great job. It just really fills my heart with joy whenever he takes time to compliment me. My second love language is acts of service. Now, luckily, I married a husband who loves to cook. <laughs> so to me, the fact that he creates beautiful meals for us every night um, and, and really takes the time to prepare meals really, to me, expresses how much he actually loves and cares for me. Now, the bottom five of the number five of the love languages for me is gifts. So I'm not a great gift giver. I, and in fact, I'm not fussed on receiving gifts to tell the actual truth. In fact, I used to say to my children, for Mother's Day, I prefer your presence rather than your presence. In fact, to me, just being there, that quality time being with me and, and, and you know, writing on a card was far more valuable and far more loving to me than giving me something. Now, my husband's um, love languages are entirely different to mine. <laughs> So his major love language is quality time, and his second one is physical touch. So his way of giving and receiving love is to spend time together, in quality time, and we're talking quality time, so just the two of us, nobody else around, he just, that's his way of giving and expressing love. And the second one for him is physical touch, so he loves hugs and, you know, <laughs> other things. <laughs> and that's his way of giving and receiving love. That's how he feels loved and expresses love in return. What's interesting for him is his gifts is number three. So he does give the most extraordinary gifts, always has. But the two of us are very different on that. I'm not such a great gift giver. I'm not fussed either way, one way or the other, whereas he does. And so I have to really up my game every time I give him a gift because I've really got to think about, you know, that's one of his love languages, one of his prominent ones, not necessarily mine. So how does it work at Christmas? Well, if you're the type of person where gifts is a very strong love language, especially if it's number one, and I know many clients of mine have very strong gifts as their love language, you think a lot about what you buy people. You spend a lot of time deciding what they want. You will buy gifts knowing who they are and what they really want, what really um, suits them. And you're probably the type of person that wraps them beautifully and, and makes sure the card and the bow and the paper all matches because the art of giving gifts is very important to you. However, unless you have, um, you're in a relationship with someone who also has strong gift giving as their love language, you may end up being disappointed every year and feeling that they don't care enough to go out and buy you something you really want. In fact, they may have resorted after all these years to giving you a gift card because you're too difficult to buy for. That's simply because your love languages are different. So if you're in a partnership with someone, for instance, who um, has a strong love language in uh, quality time, their thing was, well, I'm with you. I don't understand. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Why are you upset that I didn't buy you what you really wanted? They just don't get it as I don't get it. So when at Christmas to understand that you may feel disappointed, but that's not because they don't care. It's just that their love language is different from yours. So there's a link here below. You can click on, you can do an online quiz to see what your love language is. And I'd really be interested in finding out what yours is. I'd also encourage you to get your partner to do it or even your children. 
find out what their love languages are because when you're all on the same page and you understand it can make such a difference to Christmas somebody who thinks just by washing the dishes and clearing after the table afterwards is enough for you why would you be going on and on about a gift it's just the way that we express and receive love differently so there's the link comment below let me know how you go love to know what your love language is I'd love to know how that plays out in your family well from my family to yours I wish you a wonderful magical Christmas do take some time on Christmas Day just to express some gratitude for, for the wonderful things in life we have. Many people, of course, don't have wonderful Christmases, don't have lots of family. So maybe Christmas has to be a little bit different. But if you take time to just be grateful for the fact, the very fact that we're alive and we're breathing and we're here, we made it yet through another year, it can help Christmas go that little bit more smoothly so from my heart to yours from my family to yours wishing you a merry merry christmas and i look forward to seeing you soon bye for now